Well, hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, and today I am doing a by request video. I've had many people ask for some more tips on coloring people of color. As my longtime subscribers know, I've been coloring the human rainbow for maybe a decade or so. It's been a really long time. I have handouts that are for free. You can download these as well as blank ones to color yourself on my website. Link is in the doobly doo. And I took a bunch of Ellen Hudson's People Stamps. She has a Leading Ladies and Leaning Gentlemen series. And I have stamped them all onto one sheet so I can make one big picture with all of these people in it. Some of them are repeated because I wanna show you that you can do the same stamp and color them in different ways. And for the most part, I'm just not gonna pay a whole lot of attention to the lines themselves. And I know that is scary for some, but there are some of the people where I'm just going to change the shape of the face. Here on this little girl, I'm giving her rounded cheeks. And on each one of these, I am going to be adding masks onto them. And that is going to be something that you might wanna try. So I decided to do that in this video since we are gonna be facing probably months of mask wearing at the least going forward, but it also makes coloring people a lot easier. These two little kids in the beginning are not going to be wearing a mask. And originally I hadn't thought about doing that because I've also had people ask, well, how do I put a mask on a person? Cause I wanna do a card with a mask. So after I finished these two, I realized I could have just done all that in one video. I'm going to add masks to the kids at the end. So stay tuned if you want to see how I do that at the end of the video. This little girl is going to have these really cool ponytail sticking out all different direction things. I looked for pictures on the web and of course right now there is a plethora of awesome people in masks if you want to go get some ideas and go look on Google and just put in the kind of person you're looking for, the kind of hairdo, hairdo, and you will find on the images tab a ton of different ideas. And for most of these, I'm not gonna be putting the colors in here, but for most of these, I start off with a warm gray, I add in a really dark cool gray or neutral type of gray in a, like an eight or nine or 10, and then kind of do something in between. This little girl has all these little poofs and in the places where all her little tiny ponytails are gathered all over her head, you can see a little bit of the lighter scalp color in between. So that's where I'm creating some of those empty spaces in between to give it that sort of a look. Now this is a teeny tiny stamp, so I'm not getting into a ton of detail there, but I colored right over top of all the stamp lines. It's one of the great things about doing no line coloring is you can change things up. I can still see just barely the stamp lines for where her eyes are. And so I could draw them back in. You could draw them in with a sharp pen, but I would recommend trying it with your Copic markers and just see if you can make little teeny tiny dots and lines and those sorts of things. I'm also gonna give her little beads on the ends of some of her little pigtails because they were so cute in the photo I found of her. And then, then her uh, face will be about done, aside from the mask that I'll add later. Each one of these, I'm coloring the clothing off, the, off camera because this would have been a many hour video. This whole thing took me all day to do, so I did not want to be doing that much footage. So I'm just gonna get the faces. And we're also gonna speed it up a little bit too. This little boy, I gave him a higher forehead than he had on the stamp because a lot of times the scalp line is pushed back because a lot of African-American folks don't have bangs. I'm used to like me having bangs and everybody in my world that I draw has bangs. Every stamp, it seems, lots of stamps have bangs. But if you don't have bangs, you see more of the forehead. And for each one of these people that I'm coloring, also watch where I put eye sockets in. With children, the eye sockets should be a little bit lower and the you know top portion of the head should be bigger. I didn't do that really well on this one, but once I put him, his mask on him later, he'll look nice and small. And of course he looks small compared to the other stamps because he's a littler guy. And then for this lady, I'm gonna start with the mask. This is where I thought I'll, I'll begin. And these smiles on these masks 
or, or under these masks are basically just horizontal lines. So depending on the stamp you're using, you may have lips that you'll have to deal with. That's why no line works really well. So you may need to just put more color on the mask in order to add the mask on top or else before you stamp it, just wipe the ink off of the mouth and nose area and then you can put your own mask in. With this one, I'm also trying to shrink her head a little bit. She's the one stamp and I guess the guy stamp is a little bit bigger. You can see that the two stamps to the left of the one I'm coloring, the one has a really smaller head, the gal with the, the bun in the back. She has a smaller head than these two in front of her. So I wanted to shrink the head. Well, since I did it with no line ink, I can bring her hair in closer. I can shrink the size of her mask and everything to make her fit more normally within the whole scope of the whole picture. And I wanted to have uh, these sort of raggedy curls. I started making them originally with the gray too vertically. And the picture that I was looking at, I realized they needed to go more kind of sideways and sticking out in little groupings. Just the, the way that the hair clusters in different ways. Just find pictures, literally. Just look at the pictures and see which ways the hair goes. And I'm just using grays and blacks and that's all you have to do to make it make different hair. Just follow along with what picture you see. And I'll give you the warning to just be a little bit careful so that you don't end up with the hair getting too big. But it's really easy to just add two eye sockets above the mask and then drop the eyes into that. And you'll see me do that throughout this. So next I'm gonna go over to this lady and I wanted to give her more of a scarf around her head because I found a beautiful woman with an orange and orange, white and black scarf. And she had a mask on and then I just colored her face in in between. And once you start getting used to doing this, especially if you're doing it with a lot of people like I'm doing, it's going to become second nature to just create that face shape and ignore where the eyes are. Just add in your own, your own eye sockets when you get there. I'm going to add a little bit of a hairline sticking out from underneath the, the scarf she's wearing, soften it with some brown so that her scalp isn't really sharp, and then add in the two eye sockets that kind of come in from the side a little bit, a little shading under the neck, and then I can go in with a black or a like a C10 or a C8 or something and add eyes. Well, on her, I just put sunglasses on her. She's outside, so she's wearing her sunglasses, and I just painted them painted them with a marker, colored them right over top. She also had hair that was sticking out of the back. So this was basically holding all the hair away from her face, this scarf. And this time I did the dark first since I had that marker in my hand and then added the light of the, the gray color outside of it because the gray will be the areas where the light comes and hits the outside of her hair. Added a little detail to the mask and then put a few lines of depth into the scarf. So now she is all ready to go with a little bit of sunny highlights on her sunglasses. Both of the kids were wearing jackets, but the adults, I'm trying to put them in some summer wear, so I gave her more of a tank top dress, and the, the kids are wearing just normal clothing with, uh, with jackets, and then the girl on the right is wearing a t-shirt, and then we have another person we're gonna color over here and she is an elderly lady. And I looked up elderly African-American person in order to find a picture of this beautiful woman. She had the most gorgeous hair. If I had her hair, I would be so happy. It was sort of a diamond shape around her head. So the two sides went up in almost a kind of an angled triangle shape and had dark around the bottom edges there. I blended that with some warm gray so that it would kind of go up into these really soft gray highlights on the top of her head and then ended up using some other grays in the middle to just get some transition colors going. And I love her hair. I just thought it was so beautiful. Had some of it hanging down across her face and then I added some shading onto her face so that I'd get a little more color in there and her eye sockets and things and blended it together and then added her eyes in there and eyebrows. And I realized I hadn't added any eyebrows above sunglasses chick over there. So she got some sunglasses as well. And then I realized I could add some really dark colors 
in the shading on the elderly lady's hair and I just thought she came out beautiful. And of course she has a yellow mask and a yellow sweater. So that makes me happy. <laughs> there you go. Building this whole thing up little by little. Now let's talk about doing one of the guys because guys, you can do the same crazy things with. I'm gonna do a really easy one first. And this guy's just gonna be wearing a baseball cap backwards. This is something you can do on a lot of different stamps, just you know, color over top of the stamp itself and you know, give him a mask if you're going to. But the hat is the easiest thing in the world to do. So make a little bridge shape for the back of the hat make it go across the whole top of the head and then a line across the middle. And now he's got a hat on. If he's got any hair sticking out, you can put the hair on either side, that sort of thing. Add the two eye sockets and then drop in some eyes. For him, I wanted to add glasses because the picture I was looking at, he had glasses on. So I just went over top of the eye areas, over top of the mask as well with colorless blender for a little bit to lighten some of that up. And then I took my Copic fountain pen, yes there is such a thing, and drew in the lines around it so that I could give him some glasses. Next up we have this, uh, this little person here. This is another one of the guys. This is the same stamp, so I'm going to change it up a little bit. Forgot to put his mask on, so he gets a black mask. And you could do the same thing here. Like I was trying to show you how you could draw a beard, just leave the mouth open. So if you're trying to just add a beard onto somebody, you could do the same thing. And I just filled it in to make it a mask and then put his scalp line, his hairline, you know, high up because he doesn't have bangs and his hair goes straight up instead of coming down in bangs. Gave him some shading and some eye sockets so that then I can give some eyes and eyebrows to him. And as you can see, these are not all that hard. If you have the stamps to start with, it gives you at least some proportions to begin with. This gal, I wanted to give her a higher forehead because again, she doesn't have bangs coming down. So I'm gonna give her that higher forehead. Her hair is gonna go up and she's got more of a pom-pom type of bun on her head than the girl in the stamp. But since it is no line stamping and I'm just using the no line ink, but you could use any light gray ink to achieve the same kind of a thing. And then I'm adding some deeper shadows at the bottom of the pom pom and then a little bit of lines for kind of some of the hair pulled back from the, her forehead toward the back of her, her head. And then add a little bit of shading for her, including the nice little eye socket so that she can have her eyes set into something. If you're coloring people of other races, just use a lighter color, of course. Don't make them you know, look like they have sunken eyes. But one of the nice things about using the, the eye socket technique here, in addition to that and the mask, you don't have to worry about features much, is that you just put those two in, it gives you that general idea, and then you're not trying to draw them into a blank void and figure out where the eyes would be. So if you can get those looser eye socket shapes. Makes it a little easier. This gal I wanted to have with bigger hair because I found a beautiful woman with these long, really this flowing hair that I just, I'm telling you, I have hair issues. If you watched any of my Instagram live in the last two months, I had more complaints about my hair than I had about anything during the whole quarantine period. So yeah, I still haven't had a haircut. I am one of those who works at home, so I'm going to let other people, once we do open, and I think we're supposed to open soon after the pandemic, I think we're going to get to phase two eventually in my county, and we will be able to have haircuts, but I'm going to let other people have the first haircuts because I work at home. I don't have to be in an office. Nobody has to see me, so I will continue cutting my hair a little longer. But who knows? Maybe I can grow my hair out long enough to get one of these hairdos. So next up, next vacant face that needs some coloring. Her, I'm gonna change and transform entirely. So it may be an old lady stamp, a grandma stamp, but it can also be anything else you want because you're just getting the basic face shape here. So I'm gonna create a gal with really long braids. It's another hairdo that I always used to wish that I would have. I used to have hair that was down to my rear end 
back in the day, long, long, long time ago. And I don't think I'm going to grow it that long before I start getting it cut, but you know, it might not be a bad idea. I forgot her mask as well, so she gets a dark mask on her face. Easy enough to do. And then I'll start to put in some of the features, including some shading on her face and the eye socket. And with all of these, I'm just following along what I see in some pictures to get some hairstyle ideas and looking for where the scalp line is and what the hair looks like, what directions are all the hairs going. And here she had these just long, incredible braids trailing down across the front of her shirt, down her shoulders and stuff. Absolutely beautiful, long, long features of her beautiful hair. And with her, she also had almost some, um, you know, some braids that started up at the top. They started in her scalp. So you saw almost lines in that top section. I'm sure there's names for all these hairdos. I don't know what they are since that's not my hair. So my apologies if there are names that, that I ought to know. And now I'm going to do a bald guy because yes, you can do a bald guy too. Bald is beautiful. <laughs> And for him, I'm just going to add his his shading, his eye sockets, and his eyes. And then he needs some more shading on his head. So I'm going to add a little bit more color to him to give him a little bit more depth on there. And then leave the rest of that face there. Just add his mask. And then I'll do his, his shirt coloring offline. I'm glad I did that because this video is already long enough. It would have been probably hours long, even sped up. So here is adding the masks onto the kids. If you want to add masks onto a stamp you've already colored, you can do that. Either they can wear a dark mask, like this little boy would probably wear a mask with cool patterns on it and stuff on a dark mask. And then the little girl is going to have to wear pink. And yes, you can color pink right over top of something. You can start with a lighter pink and go with a darker color over it, that sort of thing. My finished piece is not only a tutorial on coloring different kinds of hair and adding masks to people, but also serves as a reminder to get out and vote. Make sure you're registered. If you already are registered, double check that it's still good, that you haven't fallen off of any rolls, because getting your voice out there and making it heard is important. You can also download the colored and blank pages of the Human Rainbow series over on my website, link in the doobly-doo. And I will have some more voter registration information on my blog if you are interested. If you're not registered and you need to learn how, I will link to some sites that will give you all that information. So thank you very much. I will see you again very soon. Have a lovely, lovely day.